Within a globalized context, traditional supply chains involving centralized networks opposing ecological harm, inequity, economic displacement, and manufacturing inefficiencies, based on discrete parts or assembly. Through decentralized fabrication network, we can localize the supply chain to improve ecological friendliness, equity, as well as local economic activities and fabrication, based on additive manufacturing. With these aspects in mind, we approach the design using recyclable and locally sourced polymers, which can improve structural integrity and material distribution through gradients. Foldability, which allows spatial flexibility and reconfiguration while maintaining structural performance. Finally, lighting, which can improve indoor well-being through pattern and color. Euston Station is our architectural scenario which demonstrates this comprehensive system in a large-scale project, from design to fabrication. The primary materials from waste are collected locally and recycled in nearby recycling centers. These recycled materials are then processed into architectural parts at adjacent fabrication facilities before being assembled on site. With this decentralized system, architecture can help boost the local economic activities around the site, while minimizing the overall ecological impact by sourcing recyclable materials from around the site. After researching the most mainstream materials in terms of their ecological impact, recyclability rate, versatility, structural capacities, and availability of recycling sites, we concluded that plastic presented the most potential in achieving the project goals. To minimize the project's ecological impact, we focused on recyclable plastics and bioplastics. We narrowed them down to rigid PLA and flexible TPU, which dispose of a compatible composition, allowing them to be combined together to achieve various mechanical properties. In order to provide a continuous element with structural properties, the project makes use of a geometrical folding pattern, capable of distributing the structural efforts uniformly through a surface. Multiple patterns were tested in physical samples to evaluate their behavior under tension, compression, bending and torsion, resulting with a quad-based grid as the most efficient pattern. Based on this pattern, we fabricated a foldable panel by using a multi-material 3D printer, with a dual extruder and a single nozzle. The mixing ratios between PLA and TPU are controlled through the G-code to achieve the gradient printing, which allows foldability of the prototype. As a result, we achieved a single element printed in flat, with no support material, but capable of transforming into three-dimensional forms while covering different surface areas once printed. Also, a larger scale foldable panel was prototyped to observe its properties closely. One of the main characteristics of the printed panels was the elasticity provided by the TPU, creating an opening force in each folded valley. To hold the desired shapes, we incorporated crossed cables in tension, which a central screw can regulate the distance between the faces. To this, each quad is printed with a small contour relief to insert the cable and fix the shape. To simulate a space, a simple path and a primary quad-based enclosure was created. Next, it is run through the structural analysis, deformed, and the colors are remapped in regions. The mesh composition is manipulated to densify the reddest spots, and the quads are rebuilt using a triangulation logic. This last step enables the increase in customization level. Finally, the folding logic is applied. The connection with the ground is resolved through a rigid 3D printed piece, resulting after the projection of the folded enclosure limits into a smooth continuous line through a curved edge. This piece incorporates the first row of faces of the folded structure and is held together through a laminating technique. Finally, the reliefs and cable network are included into the faces, surrounding the structural regions, which stabilizes the shape. As our lifestyles rely heavily on laptop screens, phone screens, and artificial light, one becomes overly exposed to bright blue light which can have particularly damaging effects to one's health. As these light rays penetrate our eyes, an imbalance to our circadian rhythm is created, while vital organs can also begin to deteriorate. To tackle this, color is strategically integrated in the system to offset the effects of the blue light we are often exposed to, offering a dynamic solution which adapts to seasonal changes and program requirement. Based on the available thermochromic PLA in the market, the orange to yellow and the blue to white were chosen in order to achieve the required spectrum. With these, samples were prototyped, which once interfered with light, created shadows that were mapped to the Kelvin temperature scale. 
After a few pattern explorations a pinching pattern was used, which due to its generative nature, would allow control of the sparsity and density. In order to control the level of density, a procedural loop system was put into place where each following iteration results in a decrease in density. The interaction between the diffused light, thermochromic PLAs, and pattern, would result in shadows with particular Kelvin temperatures. The goal was to create blended and uniform shadows, which were achieved through a gradient strategy. This strategy also offers aesthetic opportunities as colors are blended across a surface, based on the input pattern. Lighting was explored by using it as a navigation tool, able to direct people by firstly, identifying the line of directionality, and secondly, defining the clear quads. At night, these quads are lit and continue to guide people through embedded LED lights. The result is a multi-layered material composition, creating an intricate folded mesh which serves both the structural and material requirements, while achieving the color, pattern, and lighting intentions. As mentioned earlier, Houston Station is used as the architectural scenario that exemplifies the previously discussed notions of multi-materiality and decentralized fabrication. Beginning with observing the user's movement and behavior within the existing station and adjacent neighborhood, two major problems in the current design were identified, namely the lack of permeability between the station and its surrounding, and the disintegration with essential supporting facilities. In order to improve these two aspects, the circulation was used as the basis of design which translated into four-phase strategy. First, the site and design boundaries were set as the primary design focus. Next, the optimum position of entrances and platforms access were analyzed by calculating the minimum average walking distance between source of crowd and nearest entrance or platform access. The combination of ideal entrance and platform access can be used to determine direct internal circulation between each node. However, these direct circulations were redundant and were ultimately simplified using several approaches. The visibility on each simplified circulation was then mapped to determine which approach performs better. Islands between selected circulations were used to place all supporting facilities and open spaces. Each facility was positioned based on the logic that vital passenger services need to be placed in the most visible areas while open spaces must be distributed evenly throughout the building. The final arrangement of circulation was then tested using agent-based analysis which reveal high crowd potential in current design. The circulation width was then adjusted in high crowd areas before generating the initial enclosure. Next, this enclosure goes through the customized process involving structural analysis and quad manipulation, resulting in the folded multipolymer system. Color was also assigned to resulting folded panel according to semiotic and lighting temperature requirement. Color customization on each panel can be achieved through an integrated patterning system, embedded in between the 3D printed layers. We examined one section of Houston Station, to better illustrate the design process and fabrication system. The design approach began with a mesh manipulation based on structural analysis, pattern and folds generation, defining boundary for folding control, and integrating cable and relief systems to control the folds. The ground connections created rigid boundaries that hold the overall enclosure. The semiotic lighting and pinching patterns were integrated into the panels through material gradients and layering processes. The panel layers include the relief and cable network, the PLA and TPU top layer, two micro pattern layers with different gradients, and another PLA and TPU layer at the bottom. The ground pattern was created based on the boundary lines and the connection between platforms and exits, to further guide passengers within the station. For fabrication and assembly, the panels and ground connection will be 3D printed off-site in parts in nearby facilities before the on-site assembly. The ground connection will be fixed in place by casting concrete on the exterior side while the interior side is connected with the panels through a snap lock system. Similarly, the assembly between each panel is also based on a snap lock system. The panel production could be categorized into small scale, medium scale, and large scale based on the panel area to allow for the distribution to different production facilities near the site. 
This reflects how the decentralized network is integrated into the project, helping the boost of local economic activities around the site. Finally, shown here is Euston Station's new canopy, which demonstrates the use of Metaplas in a large-scale architectural scenario. The comprehensive multi-material system showcases folding as a structural tool and fabrication method while making use of the lighting and color design strategy for better spatial quality and improved overall well-being.